just like to welcome you once again to our Lema Word, where we will be looking at the Word of God, which the man of God spoke to us on Sunday live Facebook. So I would just like to encourage our friends and relatives to share our Facebook page so that we can enjoy together the benefits of being a child of God. Hallelujah. Today I'm with Pastor Webster again, my Pastor Jane. We love you all in the name of Jesus. Amen. The man of God spoke about David. How God located David amongst his people. So he spoke about the anointing of God. When God locates you, he doesn't look at the appearance, the outside appearance, or how good you are, how eloquent you are, how educated you are. But God looks the inner man because that's the, the thing that he really wants to relate with. Hallelujah. Amen. So the man of God shared with us in the book of First Samuel chapter 16 from verse 1. Mm, let me read. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul? Since I have rejected him and king over Israel, as king over Israel, fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I'm sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to be king. But Samuel said, how can I go so hear about it and kill me? What do you say, Pastor Webster? Okay, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. uh, viewers all over the world, uh, you are welcome uh, to the, this live service. Uh, we are doing a recap uh, of the service that we had with the man of God, Prophet Lister, uh, on Facebook on Sunday. Uh, so here, uh, we are touching the story of David uh, when Samuel anointed David to be the king of Israel. Uh, I understand that uh, on verse 1, uh, this was the Lord who was giving an instruction uh, to his servant Samuel to go and anoint uh, David uh, to be the king of Israel instead of Saul. Right. Uh, that, uh, before that, uh, Saul, God rejected Saul to be the king. God rejected Saul to be the king. And I understand that uh, from the story of Saul, for him to be the king, it was not God himself who chose Saul, but it was the people of Israel who cried unto the Lord, crying for a king over Israel. No, it was not uh, the will of God. It was not the perfect will. Like, uh, if you remember, uh, last week uh, we, we spoke about uh, the permissible will of God and the perfect will of God. Saul so came in as the permissible will, not the perfect will. But here now, this is the Lord who is instructing uh, his servant Samuel to rise and, and go to anoint someone uh, who was a perfect will uh, of the Lord. So, uh, when the Lord spoke to, to, to Samuel, uh, Samuel was moaning. Mourning for the for for the for for the for Saul, the king of Israel, uh, who was rejected by the Lord. He was mourning because he was the one who went and anointed uh, Saul. And at the same time, uh, the Lord is giving him a task to anoint another king during his mourning. I understand that it is the Lord who chooses the leaders. Uh, a few minutes ago, we were praying for the leaders. Uh, so let us say that 
uh, it is the Lord who give us the leaders, it is the Lord uh, who anoints the leaders to be in those positions. So now the Lord is instructing Samuel to go and anoint David. But now this guy is caught in between Samuel. He is now in between. In between of Saul and in between of David. And at the same time, he is supposed to do what the Lord is instructing him to do. Go and anoint David. But on the other side, uh, there is Saul. And Saul is the current king of Israel. Uh, just by hearing that there is someone who is going to be anointed in place of me, uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't think that uh, there was going to be a happy ending because of, uh, simply because of that. Because the word of God says, since I have rejected him as king over Israel, so meaning that Saul had already been rejected by God, mm -hmm. but, but he was still ruling as a king. Mm -hmm. So you might be someone having a certain position, yes, but already the presence of God is already departed. departed. Yes, because whatever office that you have, mm -hmm. I believe that each office, whether political, whether what, you there is a certain anointing mm -hmm. upon mm -hmm. that office yes. that God puts. On his people. Yes. So the Bible says, I'm sending you to Jesse mm -hmm. of Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to be king. Yes. He chose someone, yet someone is still reigning. Yes. So there was going to be chaos already because yeah. how can someone lead Clash when, of I'm, the titans. when I'm already on the position? Uh -huh. yeah. How can someone be a king? When, I'm a, when I am a king. Mm -hmm. So, God's ways, you know, they are not, you, you can't understand God's ways, how mm -hmm. God does his things. Mm -hmm. Because God does his things with his own understanding. Yes. He was having his own level. He wanted to demonstrate something. Yes. Let's continue reading the word of God. The Lord said, take a haifa with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to sacrifice to the sacrifice and I will show you what to do. You and you what to do. You are to anoint for me the one I indicated. Uh-huh. Yeah. Now, now this is the Lord uh, who is now using his own wisdom. His own wisdom. Because uh, Samuel uh, gave an excuse to the Lord. And now the Lord uh, is now using wisdom so that the people, the people uh, will not um, we will not think that there is someone whom Samuel is going to anoint as the king uh, so that the word will not reach the ears of Saul uh, that Samuel anointed someone uh, to be the king in place of you. So the Lord is now putting wisdom in his servant. So this is showing us that uh, even every servant of God, every servant of God must operate in the wisdom of God. In every office that the Lord uh, has put you in, you have to operate with the wisdom of God. Listen to God first. Yeah. Listen to God first. And then do exact what the Lord is saying. Like here, the Lord gave an instruction to Samuel. But because of fear, uh, fear is the tool that the devil uses to attack us Christians, to attack the people of God. Like here, uh, the fear attacked Samuel because it is a tool of the enemy, the weapon of the enemy to attack the Christians. So now the, the enemy attacked Samuel with fear. So he is now telling God, Oh Lord, look, 
if so hears it that I am going to anoint someone as the king of Israel over him, then it is going to be something else. So is going to kill me. Because already the, the, the spirit of the Lord had already departed upon Saul. And the evil spirit was now upon Saul. He was now operating with the spirit, with the spirit that is not from the Lord. Yeah. 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 The Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice. Mm. Meaning that the man of God, the only thing you are supposed to do was to do is what God has indicated him to mm -hmm. do. Is everything that the Lord has instructed him to do. Because mm -hmm. sometimes the, the instructions are of God are not just as easy to follow. Because like what so like what the man of God said here, he was afraid of his own life that so might kill him. Yes. Meaning it was not an easy task. Not an easy task. Sometimes if you see the, the, the mission or the, the the work which God gave you, it's easy or you can just do it somehow. It's not, I don't think it will be, a, it will be directly from God because normally the things of God are hard to mm -hmm. accept. Mm -hmm. They're difficult to, to accept. They're mm -hmm. not as easy as 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 we might water. think, yes. Because yeah. the things of God are not easy. Mm -hmm. Because uh, you'll be doing the perfect will of God, not doing what you want, but God will be instructing you to do the difficult, the, the other side of the, <laughs> the, 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 the issue. Yeah, yeah, Pastor. Uh, still on that light, uh, we are saying that the things of God, they are not easy to do. They are not easy. Uh, we want to look uh, back uh, in the Bible, uh, in the book of Genesis, uh, when the Lord sent Moses to Pharaoh to tell Pharaoh to set free the children of Israel, the task was not easy. Even Moses, he, he, he gave an excuse to the Lord that, look Lord, I'm slow, uh, very slow to speak. How am I going to stand in front of Pharaoh and speak to him? The task was not easy. It was not easy. So every task of the Lord, uh, if you listen uh, to to His voice, if you listen to the word of uh, to, to the word of the Lord, uh, and if you follow the instruction, uh, with human eyes it is not easy. But in the spirit, everything will be sorted out. When the Lord will be with you, there's no way uh, the Lord will send you to do uh, a task. Uh, and you will leave you like that without uh, being with you in everything that you are not in everything that you are going to do. After all, uh, you have obeyed the instruction. You have done what the Lord is is requiring you to do. Yeah. Let's continue reading the word of God. Samuel did what the Lord the Lord said when he arrived at Bethlehem. The elders of the town of the town trembled when they met him. They asked him, do you come in peace? Samuel replied, yes, in peace. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Concentrate, consecrate yourselves and come to the sacrifice with me. Then he concentrated Jesse and his son and invited them to the sacrifice. When they arrived, Samuel saw Eliab and thought, surely the Lord's anointed stands here before the Lord. Seven. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things man looks at. Man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Uh -huh. Man looks at the appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. From the first go, from the first uh, the, the the first instruction that the Lord gave to Samuel, uh, the Lord said, "The Lord said, I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to be king." Meaning that the Lord had already chosen someone, but here is the man of God now. 
uh, upon seeing uh, one of the sons of Jesse and the, the servant of God uh, is now saying, ah, surely the Lord has, cho has chosen this one because of the outward, uh, 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 the outward appearance. I understand that our eyes, uh, they cannot see what the Lord sees. For us, we see in the physical, we are attracted by the out uh, outward appearance. We are attracted by the things uh, that satisfies the flesh. But here is the Lord. The Lord is saying, no, I don't see the outward appearance. I don't see what your eyes see. But I see the heart. I see the heart. Yes. The word of God says, um, for the word of God says, when they arrived, Samuel saw Eliab and thought, surely the Lord's anointed stands near before me. Uh -huh. Meaning that Saul had not yet known the exact person the Lord has appointed him to go and anoint. Uh -huh. This was God's secret. Mm -hmm. Yet, God has his own person he had already chosen. He thought that this man is handsome, this man is mm -hmm. good, mm -hmm. looking at the appearance. But the Lord was not looking at the appearance. Mm. That is why God told Samuel that do not consider his appearance. Mm -hmm. Because if it was the appearance, indeed he was going to anoint it, to anoint the first person he has met. Mm -hmm. But because the Lord didn't want him to consider the outside appearance, mm -hmm. because the Lord doesn't look the outside appearance of yes. men, but he considers the heart of a man. Mm -hmm. Because that is where the presence of the Lord abides, not in the flesh. Not in the flesh, the yes. spirit being, that is what God looks at. Uh -huh. God looks at the heart. Mm -hmm. Are you capable of handling of handling pressure? Yes. Are you capable of handling whatever that comes in a way? Uh -huh. Because the capacity, God was looking at the capacity. Mm -hmm. of all these people because if you are not able to handle whatever which is going to come yes. or if you if you are not a person who is patient and enduring mm -hmm. you won't be able to stand these guys if we still got deeper into the word of God we could see that these guys were just seated at home mm -hmm. doing nothing at home mm -hmm. meaning these were the guys who like a pleasure <laughs> they were not good at working. They, they were resistant to pressure. Yeah. They were resistant to whatever that comes in their way because they were the mommy boys and the, and the daddy boys. Mm -hmm. You know, the word of God says, um, verse 8, Then Jesse called An Aminadab and made him pass in front of Saul, of Samuel. But Samuel said, the Lord has not chosen this one either. Jesse then made Shama pass by. But Samuel said, No, has, the Lord has chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. But Samuel said to Jesse, said to him, The Lord has not chosen this. So he asked Jesse and these all and all and said, are these all the signs you have? Mm -hmm. There is still the youngest, mm -hmm. Jesse answered, but he is tending the sheep. Samuel said, send for him. We will not sit down until he arrives. Right, now pastor, you see here, the, the, the situation here. Now the prophet of God, the servant of God, uh, is now listening to the voice of God now. Yeah, at first he was using his mind. He was using his mind. And then the Lord told him, no, 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 no. Not any of this. Not, not any of Abinadabi. Uh, not any of the sons of Jesse who were present 
uh, presently at the, at the house at that moment. He is now listening to the voice of the Lord. Because at first he wanted to use his mind to choose the king, to choose whom to anoint. But after the Lord told him, no, myself, I look deep into the heart. Because God is spirit, like what you said, God is spirit. And we understand that our hearts, this is where the inner man dwells. The inner man dwells in the heart. So this is where the Lord is looking now. The heart, the inner man. Because the Lord is spirit. So, these people, uh, they were very good uh, at their outward appearance. But in the heart now, in the heart, the inner man was not good at all in the presence of the Lord. So now the man of God is now listening to the voice of the Lord. Until to the last, last son who was presently available at the house at that moment, the last son of Jesse. And then that is when the man of God is asking now, is there no other son of yours who is not here? Who is somewhere else? He is now asking. Because the Lord had not yet spoken. After all the sons, after all the sons of Jesse passed by, uh, uh, passed before the prophet of God, the Lord has not yet spoken. So who is this person now? Who is this person? Of which I understand that uh, when Jesse saw the prophet of God arriving and holding the one with the anointing, Jesse understood that this one uh, is used to anoint the kings. I understand that. So now he called all his sons, all his finer sons, <laughs> in his own eyes to stand before the prophet of God. But now, he is the prophet of God. He is now asking, is there, is there no other son of yours? Is there no other son of yours? Mm. You know, it's so interesting that the, the youngest son mm. was the one tending sheep mm -hmm. where the eldest were at home. Uh, yes. Meaning, somewhere, somehow, mm. God was training David, mm -hmm. but these elder brothers were seeing as if it is good uh, in their own sight, mm -hmm. not knowing that it was according to the will of God that he wants David mm. to be trained in that manner. Yes. Because standing sheep is not an easy thing. It's not. But when God said in his word, I will choose a man after my own heart. Yes. Meaning that he had a man who was tending sheep mm -hmm. with with no without those uh, features which were being considered that a person can be mm. a, a good king. Mm -hmm. But the quality that I, I I liked most was tending the tending of the sheep, mm. meaning that already David was a man who had a a leadership quality in him. Yes. Because by tending sheep, it only means that he had a leadership quality. Yes. In him. Yes. It's not an easy thing to tend a sheep or something like mm -hmm. that. But it's because he had already been ordained by God, mm -hmm. not knowing that he was already moving in the in the in the will of God. So the the Lord started training David uh, by attending the sheep. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, you can read. So he sent and had him brought up and brought in. He was rooted with the fine appearance and handsome features. Then the Lord said, rise and anoint him. Finally, the Lord is now speaking. Yes. The Lord is now speaking. Rise and anoint him. Yes. This is the person. This is the person. Uh, you can read up to the, to the last verse. 
It is now the Lord speaking. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord came upon David in power. Samuel then went to Rama. After uh, the man of God anointed uh, David, then the Spirit of God came upon David with power. With power. Imagine the Spirit of the Lord resting upon uh, this young man, but with power. Uh, it, during Saul's kingship, yes, the Spirit of the Lord was with Saul, but not with this power. Not with this power. Was where that the Spirit of the Lord was upon Saul. And then the Spirit of the Lord departed upon Saul. But here is the Spirit of the Lord now coming and resting upon David with power. Meaning that the Lord uh, had something uh, in store for David. Because he was the man who was after the Lord's heart. After the Lord's heart. And we understand that the, the way that Saul was, was anointed uh, by the same prophet of God was different from the way that David was anointed. Because David was anointed straight from the horn. The horn can suck in the anointing. So meaning that this anointing, uh, when David was anointing, was anointed, the anointing went and suck in. Okay, so pastor, uh, that was the difference between the anointing uh, of, the, of the two men, Saul and David. Yeah. So what do you want to say to the viewers as we're closing up? I just like to say, God doesn't look at the outside appearance of men, but mm -hmm. God looks in the inner man because that is when God, when God created men, he wanted someone to relate with, to have a communion with him. Yes. So, and the anointing of God doesn't look at the appearance or doesn't come upon someone with good appearance. Mm -hmm. But the anointing of God can just land on someone with a good character and whatsoever. But the anointing can only change the person. David was someone with the good characters, mm. characteristics. But God, because of the anointing, God changed David to be a man he wanted him to be because he's the man who was after God's own heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, viewers all over the world, for watching this uh, Rema words uh, as we are doing the recap of the service that uh, the servant of God will be ministering to the people all over the world. Uh, this is Pastor Webster, Miracles and Deliverance Releases International, and Pastor Jane, Miracles and Deliverance Releases International. You can catch us live uh, every Sunday from uh, 10 o'clock uh, at Prophet List Sembarash at Lagusen, uh, that is the Facebook page, and also on YouTube uh, at Prophet Lister. Be blessed, stay blessed, and stay safe. In Jesus' name, Amen.